We really are. So, <laughs> Gun and Double, uh, the game itself, um, it's a 3D sh shooter, kind, 3D action shooter. I, in a weird sort of like uh, saying of that. If you watched or my let's play of the Berserk PS2 game, or you're familiar with the game, it's not too dissimilar from that, but this one, it's more distance based for how you engage enemies. <clears throat> Hello, titties. Unfortunately, because of what I said earlier, we're going to forever skip her after, forever after. Because it takes too long to listen to all that dialogue. That we clearly do not understand. I can make out some things that she's saying. Like, obviously, the intro cutscene we saw before was the lead uh, to uh, raiding on Coleslaw's parade, as <laughs> well as adding the fact that the uh, AAU had a lot more military personnel than they were laying on in treaties, which is They funny. really did have an organization called the AEU. I know, it fucked me so much when I was thinking about it. Uh, Where's he, the G, damn it? Where's the G? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the major superpowers of the world are divided between three major factions. The AEU, Human Reform League, I can never remember the last one. That, that The last one's like uh, America. I forget which one it, what's called offhand though. Fuck. Yeah, Wiki page, please yeah. help. I was gonna actually go over the stats. Fuck me. So I'll explain that in a minute. It's fine. While you're while you're scanning the wiki, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly do the next mission. So uh, the gameplay in this game is basically square buttons to shoot your, to shoot uh, energy blasts. How are the an interesting thing, thing is that depending the on how Union. So it's just called the Union? Union of Solar Energy and Free Nations, the Human Reform League, and the Advanced European Union. Okay then. And now we're in Sri Lanka putting down a... No, wait, was it Sri Lanka? I think it was. Yeah. Quickly putting down a uh, war uh, that's been going on, so yeah. America's Australia and Japan is what the Union is. Huh. Makes sense. Alright, so quick rundown of the gameplay. So first of all, obviously, R1 allows you to target target enemies. Uh, right stick allows you to change who you target target, uh, target onto. Left down allows you to stick his move. Uh, D-pad apparently does the same thing, but I would never use the D-pad for this game. <laughs> uh, let's see, L1 to send, L2 descend. Square is to shoot your, shoot your blaster. Now, the interesting thing is that between, every single one of the mechs in this game actually is very unique because, like, Cessna has a pretty slow blaster, it's not the best. Meanwhile, Law Cons can obviously one-shot a lot of opponents. The trade-off, however, of Cessna is that if you get close to your opponent and you do your sword attack, which is, again, square, is it's, it's proximity-based. Think of it like Ultimate Tenkaichi, but it doesn't suck. As oh, in, hey, you have As in, you have control over it. Oh, we're fighting the, we're fighting the, uh, the Human Reform League right now. Right, they show up real early. Yeah, this is the first skirmish. I think it was going down in Sri Lanka, which was a uh, civil war going on. I want to say it was, that's what was happening. That sounds about right. Yeah. And I don't know what that is, but the, but the other ones are the Tierans, which are uh, Anno Domini's uh, stand-in for Zaku's. Yeah. Except way fatter. Very fat. A very fun thing about this series is that the, the mechs are very standout, and none of them look like Zaku's. Or like look like traditional things you would find in like UC or anything like that. So that's really cool. I like it around but uh, X is boost, you can yeah, be green and they have the shoulder plates. Yep. X is boost, you can go move in little whatever direction you want on anyway on a white anyway pad, it's really nice. Triangle is block. You can also you also have like a pseudo parry of some sort. Like let me see if you can parry this guy. Hit me. There we go. The timing is isn't very strict. I've gotten a lot by accident just by matching. Uh, now, circle is your O gauge. You might wonder what that is. So, <laughs> essentially, the O gauge, I know, that's a weird name for it, it puts you on this, like, this timer sort of thing. You press a direction, and uh, Cessna or whatever pout you're using will go in that direction and uh, either destroy an opponent, or if it's the green one, it will not destroy them. It's the ultimate jutsu from the mob battles in Storm. It actually, wow, actually, I don't know how good you're right about that. I want to like, it, go, it goes. From enemy to enemy, and you have to do a singular input every time. Yeah. So look, every anytime you uh, end one of them, as in you actually. Oh God! Overdrives. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> I didn't like that mechanic. Overdrives from which game? Was that ten? Ten. Yeah, I, I thought you it was gonna be ten. That, that's what came to mind the first time. It's not as horrible, but the QTEs does kind of seem reminiscent at times. Okay, now one thing that isn't very obvious that the game, obviously because it's Japanese, is a language barrier, so you're not going to get everything. In fact, 
I'm gonna share a funny story. This game has almost no resources online for learning it whatsoever. <laughs> The only thing that doesn't that surprise me. The only thing that I've managed to ever find is like the wiki page that like tells you some loose things about gameplay and shit. And there's one singular guy on GameFAQs that goes in, into some detail about stuff, but not like everything you need all at once. And it's already it's kind of vague. It's poorly written, you know, two thousand eight and all that. Do you have proper camera control? Uh, or, if when you're, you're not, not locked, locked let me. I'm pretty sure you disengage lock on by pressing. Some, R1 when you're far enough away. Does the stick move your camera? Yes. It moves okay, left and good. right, but it's kind of on the stiff side. I want to rely on it. You're usually just going to be locked on. There's so, no. So long as it works at all, that's fine. There are a lot of games, even in the PS2 era, that still don't make use of the stick for camera controls. Yeah. Which I do not get. Uh, it's only one generation removed from PlayStation 1, which is where they were really trying to innovate with 3D games. I'm not going to. I'm not too shocked. So when we're trying to be kind of. Like a little bit more modern, I guess, but yeah. Oh, wait, I believe this is a friend of ours. <laughs> Boy! Young man! Right, that's what he. Damn it. What did you think he said? Well, in Japanese, he just he just calls him Shonen. Oh, God. <laughs> which mean, that's a good translation, actually. Which, mean, which means he calls him Boy or Young Boy. Yeah, that that is a fairly apt analogy. Now, boss fights will offer. I like, a little, yeah, I like Young Man better. It, it's uh, Young Man. It's funnier and it has a little more bravado about it. Young Man. It all. Uh, it also implies at least a modicum more respect. Yeah, because man, not boy. Yeah. Even the Cessna is literally like fourteen years old right now. I'm pretty sure. Seventeen. I think he's like 15. He's a little bit on a tiny side at this point. And there's like a five year time skip going into uh, season two. Yeah, he's 23 in season two. So, when you're in boss fights in this game, uh, the game actually does a little unique thing where if you get close enough to your point, the game will cut to this camera that seems like it's trying to replicate like a sort of sports arena kind of camera where it's farther away. It's not logged onto anything in particular. And like it, it feels dynamic. I find it to be kind of cool. For like gauging like what your opponent's doing. 16. 16 in season one, 21 in season two, 23 in Awakening of the Trailblazer, and 73 in the epilogue of Awakening of the Trailblazer. <laughs> you gotta be specific <laughs> about that one. <laughs> Anyways, also like I was trying to say earlier, uh, one thing the game doesn't really tell you and you have to find it yourself through uh, searching is that if you hold down square and X, you'll actually begin charging up a unique special attack for each character. This is a really weird backdrop. Mm. How can there yeah. be clouds if you're so far, if you're elevated so far that you can see the curvature of the Earth? That's a great question. At uh, that point, at that point, you're in the atmosphere. Uh, when's the last time you've been on an airplane and looked at the window? <laughs> uh, uh, two years ago. That's a few years, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, this guy kind of does kind of do this, but I want to be to the point where you can see the fucking curvature of the Earth. I'm thinking that's just the game's perspective being a little fucky. I mean, it's. It's cute. It's cute. But... <laughs> I'm pretty sure each of these boss fights also does have a QTE finisher as well. I don't think it really fails you if you miss any of them, but it does it does raise your score, which is good for trying to raise your keys in with each of the characters. <laughs> it is actually called that, yes. Of course they are. No, I guess that would be the general term. You know, it doesn't mean bonds. Does it? Yes, yeah, so that's the exact word for bonds. That was my guess as well. But yeah, I guess I suppose that does kind of add up. You know, also, I just realized something sad. Hmm. Unless we actually do get into um, SD Gundam, this is the only time we're going to see the Axio. Oh, we're going to. I have plans for that. Oh, boy. Still working through some details. Alright, so also, obviously, you've probably seen it before with some portraits in the game, but. Because this is emulated, uh, some graphics do fuck up, like with character windows or some other small various details. You can, probably, you can see it right next to uh, Neil's head down there, that, yeah, it's a little gray box. Now, if you're playing on PCSX2, you can press F9 at any given time, it'll switch it to software rendering, and it'll immediately fix it, unfuck itself, to put it nicely. Um, we are not in a position to do that. We're not really in a position to easily do this. Reason at all. What the hell? You can also uh. click. You can also click merge sprites. I think I do have merge sprites on, but I think I have a different version of it up. You have alliance sprites, not merge sprites. Oh, that's it. Alliance sprites is so you'll get the black lines going up and down the screen. 
Hmm. Anyway, yeah, that was our first encounter with Graham Maker. He might be a recurring character. <laughs> might be. Anyway, okay, so each of these characters also does. Since I mentioned before. Are you before, picking your, uh, where to dump your points or who you want to partner with next? Who you want to partner with next. So, depending on. This is loosely inferred, but I have seen stat differences, so I know these do affect stats to a degree. Each of these characters does offer, like, very different stat buffs in different areas for the character you select. Like, for, uh, for example, with, um, uh, Neil here, the plus, the plus 35, I'm pretty sure, isn't, like, your shot damage. Probably. Uh, uh I just don't know what AMG means. That's what the body mean the most, but I'm pretty sure it relates to second, uh, regarding movement. Uh, Tiaria, the plus 40, I'm more concerned is for your physical attack, because when you select, um, Setsuna as a, as a main, as a partner, this is, that plus 40 is fucking monstrous, it's huge, and it gives, yeah. like, plus zero for what, um, uh, Neil offers you. I'm gonna mix it, I'm gonna stick to him for a timing, just because they are generally together at the start of the show, and I I'm trying to get off the, uh, team keys this as well, because those are really neat. The highest, uh, stat that Alleluia would offer would be your mobility stat because the Arios and the Kyrios are transformable Zeta types. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's what it regards to. Other than that, I'd imagine that our, the Arios will probably be the most balanced. Uh, probably. Okay. Kill count. Just kill a certain amount of enemies in order to get to the stage. 60. Kyrios. Kyrios is season 1. Oh yeah, that's right. Arios is season 2, right. Because it, because it becomes the archer the archer Arios, where they get a red GM for Marie, and it plugs into the Arios's ass. Yep. So now, uh, each of these characters, as I explained, had, does have different traits that they specialize in. Setsuna has like the biggest fucking blade uh, for his melee option, obviously because of you. It's know, a real big deal blade. that he carries a physical sword. That does, that is a plot point. I still love that. It came out right at the very end. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and rip it. I think you have to get to like plus 60 in order to get the team keys and those off. Now, 60? Yeah. Uh, it's either 60 or 50 is one of those. It's a little bit up there. Oh like, my god. So as you can see, every time you get a certain amount, you get a 1. Uh, that will denote the fact that you got your, you can activate a different uh, super. What one that drops out? We got 2, so that would be like level 2. Uh, I've already shown level 2 off of 4 because I drop one of these inputs with the now also I'm gonna to try to get to the 100 because the one Jesus Christ the 100 is in infinity mode which it just shows a double O and is that trans oh that's not trans am but trans am is right in this game. you have to wait a while to get that yeah that's like towards the back back half of season one this is still 48, happening 49 50 51 and drop there we go. Jesus Christ. I don't fully agree with this, but luckily we have a, I have access to most of these in the gallery because I've done them already. Oh, that's the Dynamis. Yep. With the weird shields. They the, look really flat. The wing shields. Okay. Close enough. Mm, no the QT, well, the QTEs really threw me off at first because I had no idea what each one did, but I'm going to loosely outline what you, each one is for. Oh, wait, is this what I think it is? Is he here already? Yeah, Is my is. war husband here? Yeah, he is. He's here stolen. that's stolen an act? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Seth, each one of these characters obviously also has a little bit of history. As it turns out, Setsuna's old commander uh, slash weird ass parental figure is still alive in the world and they run into each other because he happens to be a bit of a mercenary fun stuff this man is Al Ali Al Sanchez aka the single most fun and most important driving force in a narrative of Gundam as a whole and Double O as a whole don't say and Gundam as a whole but I wouldn't be too far out of the mark and the funnest character in the entire franchise absolutely I'm gonna say it right now Scott McNeil this, I love that man so fucking much. That scared this might, me. This yeah. might be Scott McNeil's best performance ever. I think you're right. So, you want a fist fight? Well, Mr. Silent Gundam Pilot. Scott McNeil is a very tall uh, Canadian man who dresses like a cowboy, and he has <laughs> the deepest voice I've heard. And they cast him as duo! 
he cast his fucking dual Maxwell, who was like a five foot tall kid. As a six, as like a 16 year old. As a 16 year old twink. Yup. Okay. But fucking hilarious, I know. I couldn't have picked it better myself. <laughs> so this is fun. You might have to put some audio clips of Ali Al being. There's no way I can't. Like, Ali Al is like 100%. <laughs> The dub for, for Double O, hot take, maybe, is the absolute best part of Double O. Well, you stopped at Gundam. Too bad. The fun was just beginning. That's fair. Yeah. Well, maybe not the absolute best part of Double O. Double O itself is a really good show, but it adds so much fucking charm and, and takes it to what it was, would not be otherwise. And might be... Might be Ocean Dub's magnum opus. Yes. Like... 79 is good, Brat's Whale is good, but this is so fucking stellar. It's gonna be between uh, Double O and Death Note, and yeah. for my money, it is Double O, and Double O's dub is one of the best dubs of any Gundam series. Absolutely. Seed is a little iffy, it's confident in the original, but it's not like fantastic. Yeah, this is 5 out of 10. It, it, yeah, it's kind of weird. We have characters from Ed, Ed and Eddie voicing major characters like Athrun is all three deep. of them. Um, Eddie is like some fuck off character that dies really fast. I think Miguel and Please. Dumb Ed is who the hell is he again? Well, he was a Kira, was he? Kira. Oh my god. <laughs> Dumb Ed. <laughs> uh, Butter Kira. toast. Butter toast. I'm gonna say I. <laughs> well, I want to know that Ed and Eddie was like the main thing I watched in Cartoon Network as a kid. Because it's such abstract humor, it's fucking. How did I fail to mention that when we were recording Seed? I feel like we already mentioned it once, but it kind of got lost in translation because of everything else happening. Oh, <laughs> it didn't help. We just watched the last OVA before that too. Yeah. <laughs> that would kind of have a hand in it. Yeah, he sounds a bitch. It made meter goes real slow. It usually goes really fast if you manage to get uh, a high score or you utilize the keys on a lot. But for this, for the purposes of a let's play, I have to cut off early a lot of the time.